Hey, what's up guys? Welcome to a new episode of Damn Shard Fishing. And today we have the very unfortunate task of converting a Garmin Echo Map into a ice fishing, lean, mean, fish catching machine. So I'm gonna show you guys how to convert an Echo Map into a Garmin ice fishing bundle. Bear in mind this applies to any kind of Garmin Echo Map, basically any plus any ultra and any UHD unit. So I actually have a plus unit right here, 95 SV, um, but you can use this with any seven inch, nine inch, or any of the ultra units. I think a 12 inch is actually too big to fit in the bag. Uh, so you're gonna wanna go with a 10 inch max. And there are all kinds of bundles, okay? All kinds of configurations when it comes to these ice fishing bundles. So I'm gonna show you guys how I did it because I actually bought everything individually, but if you look in the description below, I will post links to absolutely everything. So you can buy these bundles already made, ready to go in different sizes. Uh, you can get them with already live scope included. So there's all kinds of ways to buy these bundles. So I'll put links in the description below to different bundles that you can buy, as well as the individual items that I got. And of course, guys, all I ask in return for this is to please, pretty please help me grow the channel by liking the video. Make sure you're subscribed, hit the bell notification. That way you know the next time I put out a video, and uh, yeah, so let's get started. Let me show you what we got going on here. All right, so let's start off with the very first, most important thing, uh, and that would be your echo map. Basically, any of the, all the echo maps have a, uh, a mode for a sounder for ice fishing. So it's just important that you have uh, the right cables, okay? So different units have different cables, so just pay attention to that. So the first generation of echo maps use a four pin transducer cable and a four pin power cable. So it's just important that you get the right power cable, okay? And I'll, I'll put everything again, links in the description below. And if you get the transducer that I got, you'll also need, which is a four pin, you'll also need a four pin transducer adapter to a 12 pin transducer uh, plug, and I'll show you guys all that. Don't worry about it, we'll go through it, okay? So you need the echo map, all right, first thing. Now one thing super important to mention, okay, is that no matter which ice fishing bundle you get, unless it comes with an echo map, so you buy the bundle that includes an echo map, it will not include the cradle. So super important, if you're gonna buy the bag or if you're buying the ice fishing bundle uh, upgrade or anything like that, make sure you get a cradle. You will need an extra cradle or you can pull the cradle off your boat and use that, all right? But I bought an extra one. After that, you're gonna need a transducer. So again, if you decide to buy everything individually, you'll need a transducer. So this is the GT8HW IF transducer, of course, stands for ice fishing. This is the better of the two. There's two different models. This is the better one. Again, I'll have links to all this stuff. After that, you're gonna need a battery. Now, you can buy, again, ice fishing bundles already complete with a battery. If you buy the regular standard Garmin ice fishing bundle, it will come with a regular lead acid battery, but I wanted a lithium iron phosphate battery, so I got a LifePo Millertech 20 amp hour battery. By buying everything individually, I got it for cheaper prices. So basically my total bill came out to the same if I would've bought the bundle, but the difference was is that I got a battery that was a lot better. Now there are new ice fishing bundles you can get from Garmin that include the live scope and come with a lithium battery, but again, they're super expensive. I found it just cheaper to shop around and get all the parts individually. You'll need a power cable, all right? So super important, you need a power cable. So this is a four pin large power cable, so this would be good for pretty much all of the different models of Echo Maps except the first generation, which would require the small four pin. And then I have an adapter that allows me to take a four pin transducer to a 12 pin transducer connector. And this is what's gonna plug into the unit and the transducer plugs into that end. And then finally, we need the bag. So in this particular case, I bought the extra large carry bag. So in here comes the bag and the frame as well as adapters that are needed to connect the uh, live scope black box, the GLS 10 box inside of here. So this will be the first time I open this. Um, yeah, so this is kind of an unboxing as well. So we're gonna unbox this. I'll show you what it comes with and uh, we'll slowly put everything together and see what's up. All right, let's start off by unboxing the carry bag. So this is the extra large carry bag and base. So first we get the actual bag itself and we also have the plastic base. And then we've got a tray that comes out. And here is the top handle section. And we got some instructions and we got a baggie full of goodies. All right, that's that. Whee! All right, let's get the base out here. So there's something I wanna show you on this base. Let me get up close. So you can see on the base, there's actually a cutaway for a battery. Now this is where I'm gonna get myself in trouble because I didn't get a battery that fits in here. Um, although I think Dakota Lithium has started making batteries designed to fit right in these spots. So I might be in trouble with my M-Tech battery, we'll find out, but I will give you guys exact measurements of this so that way you guys can plan accordingly when you go to buy your batteries. 
All right, so first things first, we're gonna take our handle and we're gonna go ahead and click the handle in place. So there are little plastic tabs inside that click in place. If you ever need to take this handle out, because it won't come out anymore, there's plastic tabs on the inside right in here that you just pinch. So you just pinch this and this and it'll click and you can then pop out the handle afterwards. So that's that. There are bolts that secure the handle in place as well. So we'll get those bolts out. So you're just gonna look for an individual baggie that has two bolts and two nuts in it. And you'll need a Phillips screwdriver. And we'll go ahead and thread these through. Now what I really like about this is that you don't need pliers or anything for the nuts because there's a plastic, there's an indentation in the plastic that will hold the nut in for you while you screw that down. Okay, now remember, this whole thing is made out of plastic, so you don't wanna go crazy when you're tightening it down, all right? Just a couple of pounds of pressure is pretty much all you need. If you, you, <laughs> if you try and tighten this, winch this down, you're gonna hear cracking sounds, and that won't be good for anybody. All right, so that's done. There you go, that's what that looks like. So now we're gonna take measurements, all right? I'm gonna measure this compartment size for you guys so you have exactly the right measurements. So, you can fit a battery with a base of six, Six inches, six and one eighth inches by four inches. All right, so six and one eighth by four inches with a maximum height of, whew, let's see, that would be six and seven eighths. So six and seven eighths would be the maximum height that you'd get away with in here. So make sure you get the right battery, okay? Don't look, do like me, watch. I'm, I'm telling you right now, I'm in trouble. You see, so this battery that I got, unfortunately it's too big, I didn't pre-measure it, I'm a goof. It will only fit this way, um, which kind of works, but the problem is, is when I go to put the panoptics in here, the GLS-10, I'm not gonna have any room. So, listen, we'll deal with it as is for now, and uh, we'll do another video when I go to upgrade this with the live scope, and we'll deal with it then. Okay, so let me show you what the brackets look like for live scope. So it does come with these brackets, there's two of them. So what'll happen is there's these brackets right here. So there's these brackets that look like this, all right? So that's what connects to the base. And they just bolt on right here on the sides like this. And then your live scope goes right here, your GLS-10. So next up, let's put the cradle on. So again, when you're buying your cradle, make absolutely sure you're ordering the right one for your model, okay? So this is the one you would use for a nine inch plus unit. Now, it does come with uh, four screws, but you're not gonna use this for connecting it to the base, okay? Don't use those. And that is gonna go here. Now, on the base, there's a set of screws. I'm gonna use the four forward-facing ones because I will have a GLS-10 in here eventually, so I'm gonna put it right up front. The bolts come in the kit. I just wanna show you guys, you see how there's bolts and washers? You do not wanna use the washers on a plastic cradle. So in the case of the Plus and UHDs, they have plastic cradles. So do not use washers on plastic cradles. You only use them on metal cradles, uh, which is what you get with an ultra unit. All right, so we're gonna screw this down. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this section off the cradle just to make it easier. You don't have to unscrew these all the way, just enough to pop that off. There we go. All right, cradle base is on. Don't tighten it too much because you want to be able to move the cradle around to get it nice and straight. And also make sure you're putting the cradle on in the correct position. Don't put it on backwards. So the curved section goes in the front. Make sure that looks nice and straight. That's good. All right, give it, tighten it down. Again, do not over tighten or you will crack the base. You'll crack the cradle. Just overall, not a good look. And then we'll put this on. There we go. That looks snazzy. There we go. All right, cradle's on. Beauty. That gives you an idea of what that looks like. There you go. All right, next up, let's put the transducer together. So again, we've got our GT8. Now in the box, you'll have three main components. You'll have the transducer that looks like that. And this is what I mean by it being a four pin connector. You can see how small the connector is. Um, you get the float and you get this rubber stopper right here. So let me show you how you put that together. 
Okay, so float goes on first. We'll go ahead and put the float on. There we go. Then we go ahead and thread this on. So that'll go point downwards and pop that through. There we go. And then the, th there, you put it about the height that you want. This is how you adjust your height. And here you can see there's like a split down the stopper. So you just go ahead and put that centered like that. So when you drop this down in the water, it'll get to the depth you want, and then the rubber stopper will stop it from going down any further, and that's how you get your depth. So as I mentioned before, this is a four pin connector, so I have a special adapter here that this plugs into, so we've got a male-female connection, and these can only go one way. There's one section of the connector that's flat, so you just pop that in there, and now we have a 12 pin connector. So we'll go ahead and connect that to the 12 pin connector, which is orange on the back of the cradle. Then we can loop the extra around this. That's what these are designed for. Now you don't put these, you don't want these super, super tight. No need. Okay, so that's ready to go. So that's wrapped up. Next, uh, power cable and battery. So here is my power cable. So this is an extra power cable that I had, but you will need to order a power cable. Now there are two kinds of power cables that you can get. There's the single power cable like this, but if you're gonna be installing LiveScope, there's actually a power cable that's made specifically for the unit and for the GLS-10. However, for a GLS-10, it's recommended that you actually put it on switched power. So that means when you're not using the GLS-10, you should have a power switch that lets you shut it off and on. So there's a pretty good chance that when I get the GLS-10, I'm gonna install an on-off switch for it right on the unit with a little light on it, so that way I know when it's on. So this connector comes with a large four pin. So again, this is what you need for second generation units and higher. Um, and this one already has some terminal hardware on here that I put on. Um, and it already has a fuse, so it will come with a fuse, so make sure you keep your fuse. So you can use whatever you want on here. You can use, you know, this style, or you can use spades, so spade connectors. That way you can just disconnect and reconnect them really quick. You know, do it however you want. So I've done a lot of videos that show you how to put these things together, guys, so just check out some of my older videos. I'll put a link in the description below uh, to some where I'm showing crimping and, and all that stuff. So you need your power wire. So I'm gonna connect our power cable. And we've got a lot of extra cable, so we're gonna to wanna to take care of that. Now what's cool is if you can find a battery that fits specifically in this housing, and you're gonna want a minimum 18 amp hours if you're getting a live scope, so that way you know it'll last your whole fishing day. Now I've got a 20. Um, so if you get one that fits in here, it actually comes with straps. So these are battery straps that feed through here um, that you can use to fasten down the battery. Now for me, I can't use it, not like that. So I'd, I'll have to come up with a different way. Maybe I can join the straps together and make one big one, we'll, we'll see. But I will say I love this battery. It's got the status light right here, which is super cool. So right now I'm at 81% charged. Um, I've actually have not used this battery yet. Uh, it's got screw on posts, so it actually comes with the connectors right here. So my terminal tackle will just go right there and screw on, so that's cool. So let me go ahead and connect this. So for now we can just put that guy like that, no big deal. By the way, if this is a dedicated power cable, you can also cut it and shorten it quite a bit if you want. Um, I'm not gonna do it right now, but there's a good chance that I will probably modify it when it comes time. All right, so let's go ahead and connect our feeds. I'm gonna connect mine like right here like this, no big deal. There we go. Perfect. Then we're just gonna gather up all these cables. Honestly, I need to buy myself some Velcro straps, like just little Velcro pieces for fastening wires down. I'm not a big fan of using these. And remember, um, guys, if any of you are using live scope cables, okay, so if you're using the LVS-12 or the LVS-32 transducer for live scope, remember, never use zip ties on it, okay? Super important, you do not use zip ties. Those cables are very fragile. There's a ton of wires in those cables. Um, so if you crush them with a zip tie, you might actually completely trash your, uh, your transducer. So never, ever use zip ties on live scope transducer cables. All right, so here's our setup, guys. Ready to go. So let's get the bag out and check out the bag and put it in there. All right, so here is the bag. Take that out. All right, let's see what's happening here. All right, so this is the back. So let me just zip this up. All right, one thing I wanna show you guys on this bag that I got tricked on, okay? See this hook right here? 
Now, normally these hooks have a little, like a little piece that, that you know, kind of goes right up in here that stops, it's like a guard that stops it from popping out. Um, so when I got this, I thought it was broken. It actually looks like it snapped right off here. Nope, it actually comes like this. I returned it and got another bag and it had the exact same thing. Then I went to a store and I had them open a couple of boxes. Every single one had this. So this is on purpose, it is not broken. Don't waste your time like I did. <laughs> now this bag is really nice. It comes with a lot of compartments. So you've got a mesh bag on both sides. You've got a mesh area here. There's a zipper with mesh storage in the back of the bag as well. You have a large pocket right here. I'm assuming this is where you put your live scope transducer would be right in here when you're not using it. Um, another mesh pocket right here. And then that whole flap comes off the top. And this is not a pocket, this gives you access to the back. So let's get this in here and I'm gonna talk about some things that I don't particularly like about this bag that I think could be improved, okay? So let's, let's pop it in. All right, here we go. Okay, we're in. There you go. So, a couple of things I don't like that I find strange. There is nothing on the top of the bag that connects it to the plastic handle. So do not lift by the handle or you make a giant mess like this. You need to make sure you lift from this. And there's just no way to secure this up here. It's a, it's a little strange. I know there's this hook, but it actually doesn't go here. That's for if you wanna roll this up. So you can actually roll the bag like this. And then this comes underneath and it hooks right under here. But it, I don't see why you would do that. I mean, I don't know about you guys, but when I go ice fishing, there's always snow and there's a lot of wind, so it's blowing snow everywhere. It'll just pile up in here. So, I mean, I don't see why you would attach that. That doesn't make much sense to me. So, weird that there's this clip isn't to hold it like this. I thought like this makes more sense, but whatever, guess, guess not. <laughs> so, when you're using this bag, the way I would do this is I would actually pull this through and then I would zip it halfway. So zip it about halfway, and then you can bring this back up like that. Which leads me to my next point, there should be something here that allows you to clip it up like that so it stays like that. And as it is, it's just loose, like it just, so I'm imagining wind doing that, and yeah, so. I mean, it just, it really needs like another little hook here that clips onto this hook right here in the back and just clips it on like that, or some Velcro or, Something like that. The other thing that I'm not a huge fan of is there is no transducer arm. So if you look at a lot of other brands, there's usually a little piece that sticks out here and an arm and the transducer sits on the arm. And I like that because it keeps the cable away from the ice. It doesn't sit in the ice and it keeps it a certain distance away from the bag and it goes directly downwards as opposed to like it coming over the bag and hanging down. I'm just not a fan of that, but there is no way to put an arm on there. Maybe there's a custom solution, but as of right now, no arm. That's a bit inferior for me as well. All right, guys, moment of truth. Let's connect our unit. All right, turn it on. Success. Yes. All right, so next up, the obvious step is how do we use this in ice fishing? Well, these beautiful, wonderful machines actually have ice fishing modes on them. So we do have ice fishing sonar setup. So let's zoom in and let me show you what to do next. You can create a combo uh, that's perfect for ice fishing. All right, guys, so we're all set. We're ready to add on our ice fishing screen. So we're gonna do combos. We're gonna do customize, add. We're gonna do a two pane one. Uh, click here, click on sonar, and then you're gonna click flasher. So this is for the ice fishing flasher right there. And there you go. Then we can go ahead and click on empty where it says empty right here. We're gonna click another one. Let's do sonar, traditional. There you go. So now you have your traditional scan. Obviously without the transducer in the water, it looks messed up, but there you go. So we'll hit done. Um, and you can actually just rename this one to uh, ice fishing. There we go. Ice fishing, done. Voila, there we go. So if we go back, now it's in my combo menu. I can also do different ones. So if I wanna see where I am on the water, I can do a three pane. And here I'll go, whoops, yeah, there I'll put sonar flasher again. And then here I can put sonar traditional. And here I can put the map. So fishing chart, there we go. So now we got my fishing chart on there. So done, call this ice fishing two. 
Uh, let's see, number two, there we go, done. There you go. And you can still, you know, pinch and, pinch and pull in here. Now I'm on dry land, so obviously this isn't gonna, it's not gonna show any lakes nearby. There you go, so that's how you set this up. Now, if you wanna see it in action, this is what it'll look like. Now, bear in mind that your feed when you're ice fishing will not look like this. Um, so fish won't be arches, they'll look like long snakes. Uh, because they're staying under the cone uh, for a longer period of time. So they just appear as long snakes and things like that. There will be some bottom separation, but it will definitely not be arches. So it doesn't look like this when you're ice fishing. And we'll do ice fishing videos, and I'll get up close and show you what they look like on the sonar. So there you go. That's it. So there you have it guys, everything you need to convert your Echo Map into an ice fishing bundle. I hope you found this video super helpful. Again, go down in the description below and check out all the links I'm gonna put. I'm gonna put links to all the different products, the different bundles, it'll be really well explained. And all the components that you saw here today, I'll have links to that as well, okay? And again, just a quick reminder, don't forget to please hit the like button if you appreciated this video. Make sure you're subscribed and hit the bell notification. That way you know each and every time I put out a new video, which I try to do every Thursday afternoon. I've got more of my fall fishing series, which I'm way behind on, but I promise they're gonna be coming out very, very soon. And of course, we're gonna have ice fishing. We're gonna start talking about live scope. Uh, we got all kinds of awesome content coming up, guys. So thank you so much again for all of your support. I really, really appreciate it. And I hope very soon we're gonna do a live show. So keep an eye out for announcements on that. Follow me on Instagram or on the uh, Dan Richard fishing page, uh, and we'll have more information for the next live show. All right, guys, thank you so much. Take care out there, tight lines, all that good stuff, and we'll see you next time. Peace.